Pretty Birdie best. But now, uh, you know, I like Mainstay better. But I know Pretty Birdie's going to try the gun. I'm not going to use her. I'm going to use the two Mainstay. And I'm also going to use the 8 Eagle Express, the other Asmussen horse with Ricardo Santana. Uh, Asmussen has Velvet Sister in here. I did not like that Velvet Sister only beat two horses last time. And even though she went off and drew off by nine lengths, I'm going to go with Eagle Express, who, uh, as a maiden, won a restricted Texas State uh, Stallion Stake Race. Uh, it's a Texas bred, one by five lengths. I wouldn't have liked either over Happy Soul or Pipeline Girl, but like I said, since they're not in the race, you know, I have to kind of, you know, mop up the, this particular race with something. So ending in the Grand Slam, the race you have to win is the two mainstay and the eight Eagle Express, as well as the pick five. So going on to the closing leg in the pick five, uh, a mile and the 16th on the interstate bread maidens purse, $85,000. We have the scratch of the 10 big George's kingdom and the outside uh, also eligibles that were entered for the main track. Only the 1342 ace and the 14 reunion tour. We have a couple of changes here and there. The number three Shinjuku uh, races with the aluminum pad off. And also uh, this coat is taking the blinkers off. And that's who I'm going to go with with one of my choices. I'm using three in here. Uh, Shinjuku with Ricardo Santana taking the blinkers off. Coming uh, off a, a mile and 16 turf event at Belmont on the outer and the winner, Ocala Dream, came back to win. Now, Shin Jaku uh, had Johnny Velasquez that day, but was bet at 8-1 to one in a field of 10. So that was some type of respect. Uh, steady off heels at the 3 8 is uh, listed in the trouble line. So I don't know what that's all about. Uh, didn't seem like too much trouble, but looked like um, this coat by Japan just ran kind of a you know, a blase, even race. So still should have plenty in the tank. Taking the blinkers off, uh, looking to make a big run last uh, for this day here. Um, I'm looking at a couple of races that were on the main track at Aqueduct where it looked like in one race uh, he moved a little early. So I think that the blinkers coming off to make one run would might be the best recipe for him. The number seven, Viking Zim, written by Jose Ortiz for Jeremiah Engelhart. Does not have any inner turf experience, but does have uh, turf experience at Belmont. Uh, closing third uh, in both a sprint and a flat mile race. Uh, you know, this is a state bred race. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry I failed to mention that, but it's a New York state bred race. And I think Viking Jim needs to be a little closer today to handle those tight turns when uh, he's going to try to make his run. You can't be too far back on the inner, especially when there is a, a, a bunch of horses or a race that is void of speed. So, you know, I am trusting that Jose will have Viking Zim a little closer. Now, the eight clever fellow I am not going to use, but I do want to mention this five-year-old gelding who's adding blinkers gets I ride today and it's been beaten favorite the last two times out. Is this something I do not like? I am and without major trouble, it seems like. So I am going to throw uh, this gelding out. But I do want to mention he is going to go favorite 8 to 5 on the morning line. Will probably be somewhere around 7 to 5, 6 to 5 when the gates open. The last runner in here I'm going to use is the outside horse, the 12 Ruse. Tim Hills will train. Dylan Davis will ride. Now, inner turf course experience at Aqueduct for this similar uh, company was very, very good. Bet at 7-2 to two that day. Finished by a ne uh, just missed by a neck with John Velasquez that day. Had to lead in a stretch. Uh, bow uh, tipped his mitt uh, at the at the wire and and ran second. But that's what I normally go by, ladies and gentlemen. I I compare uh, tight turn co turf courses to wider 
turf courses, whether it's at Aqueduct or whether it's at Belmont or Saratoga. I equate uh, the inner is uh, as the same. So I handicap outer turf courses differently uh, than I do the inner. So I don't equate them the same is, is what I'm trying to say. So the, the good runs from rules. Now, I don't like the post position, obviously, but, you know, we're just going to hope for some luck and uh, that Dylan can uh, can get this uh, gelding in good position. So, yeah, the 12 rules, uh, the seven Viking Zim and the three Shin Jaku in the final uh, leg of the pick five. So once again, $16 Grand Slam, $18.50 late pick five at Saratoga. Good luck. I am going to put out a uh, a show for Saturday. I am going to Del Mar in person on Saturday. So I'm going to have to probably put out the uh, my picks for the late pick five Grand Slam without knowing the scratches because I'm leaving very, very early for Del Mar Saturday morning. So thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for the support. And good luck today at Saratoga in the Grand Slam and the pick five. Take care. This has been the exotic wager portion of Thoroughbred Ticket with your host, Kenneth Moultrie. Please tune in again next time and especially share if this show gave you a pick four, five, or six that catapulted you to having a great day at the track.